I read another favorite TikTok book and I made it out alive, but barely, and at what cost? This is my review of The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. This book is, and I cannot stress this enough, not good sm as in that is the category I would put it on. Genre. That's the genre. I'm sure there's good s out there. Erotica is something that is consumed a lot. It is well loved. I would say that as a subclassification, this is erotica. Surely the subclassification would be not good s this is a Peter Pan retelling, and by Peter Pan retelling, I assume the author is my age and grew up with this Peter Pan movie, which, let's be serious, was a bi-panic movie if there ever was one. Really, just like the rest of us, had a crush on Peter Pan, and that crush lingered into adulthood, because bi-panic is nothing if not always persisting. And then one day, this manifested into something, surely. One day in adulthood, she was like, I think I want to fuck Peter Pan, and I bet other people want to fuck. Peter Pan too. So let's make a why choose book about it. But you know what? Fair. There's a reason why a bunch of us kids who grew up in the 90s and early 2000s watching Disney movies and then later realized that we were bisexual fucking love the show Once Upon a Time. Magic and everybody's hot. You know who else is hot? Me, but temperature wise. However, something that makes me feel hot in a cute way is underwear. And today I'm wearing parade underwear. I can't show you my nipple. I know we're not even far into this and I'm already talking about nipples. Such is life here on this channel. Just wait till I get to the part of the book review where a titty gets slapped. I've been actually wearing parade bras for about a year now. This one that I'm wearing, I have owned for a year and I have a duplicate of it. So when parade reached out to me about collaborating, I almost didn't let them finish their sentence before I said yes. Say no more, I'm already wearing your stuff. Parade is an inclusive female owned brand that makes sustainable and affordable bras, underwear, bralettes in a variety of sizes, including up to 5XL. I stopped wearing underwire bras in the end stages of my first pregnancy and then when I was breastfeeding, there's no point in wearing an underwire. Why would I do that to myself? And I never went back. Last year, true and honest review of something I bought with my own money, I bought two of these mesh triangle bras. And my honest to God review is that these are the most comfortable bras I own for two reasons. The mesh is like butter soft. It's not mesh how you're thinking of mesh. It's like butter. But it's also breathable. So it's soft and I'm not sweating my literal tits off. But the elastic on these has lasted for a year. Whereas another brand, and I'll show you, that is very popular that I only bought six Six months ago, the elastic is eroding from the band. Like, it's coming out. And I dry all my bras, but this should not be happening six months after purchase. And that bra was way more expensive than my parade bras. So obviously when they asked to work together, I was already sold because these triangle mesh bras I'm wearing have breathable material, don't make me sweat, they're super soft, and they have held up in drying over the past year. I got a few new products, including these super cute mushroom underwear and a few bras in a couple of colors. I don't normally stray out into color variety with bras. I channel my inner shadow daddy and wear black all the time, but I figured why the hell not. I got a few different kinds, all of which are underwire free, but their elastic is really strong, so I'm really pleased with them. Parade has products for all bodies, which is why I love them. I love that they are inclusive in their marketing and their creation of product. There are bodies that actually look like mine on their website wearing the underwear, so I feel confident about my purchases. My audience gets 25% off site-wide by clicking the link below and using the code READS25 and there's no minimum purchase to use the code. Their styles do tend to sell out fast, so click the link below if you want to get the most comfortable bra that I have ever owned for yourself. And thank you to Parade for sponsoring today's video. Okay, The Never King, published in 2022 by Nikki St. Crow, is a indie published fantasy smut book, and while there are good ones that exist, although I've never rated one five, I'm still looking for my five star fantasy smut book. There's a fairy porn out there for everyone, I just haven't found mine yet. This series now has four books, I believe. I I want to say there's a fifth coming. I might be wrong about that. They are incredibly short and not plot centric or sense centric. There are four books. I want to say a fifth is on the way, but they're incredibly short. They could have all been condensed into one book anyway, really. And I think that that would have probably made the plot better. And I feel like I probably would have liked this if it weren't so horny. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm not opposed to why choose, which is the term that we use instead of reverse harem, which you shouldn't use. I'm not opposed to why choose as a concept. It's just that I have never found one where I'm reading it and I feel like we've actually taken the time to cultivate anything other than lust. Not that lust is bad, it's just that as a personal preference, I really want to feel the longing. I want to cultivate feelings. You gotta take it slow with me. The synopsis says, the stories were all wrong. Hook was never the villain. Hook does not appear on page in this book, which was kind of a complaint of mine. But again, this is not about plot. It's about penis. <laughs> 
It's about penises. For two centuries, all of the darling women have disappeared on their 18th birthday. Sometimes they're only gone for a day, some a week, or a month, but they always return broken. By broken, they mean mentally ill, and I don't really like that. <laughs> now on the afternoon of my 18th birthday, my mother is running around the house making sure all the windows are barred and the doors are locked, but it's pointless because when night falls, he comes for me, and this time, the Never King and the Lost Boys aren't willing to let me go. So that's the synopsis, which is really just the intro to what is a very short book. It doesn't really... Uh, lend itself to you asking like what's the mystery what's the plot <laughs> because it's not plot centric it's really just the setup so that you can be like ooh, let's get to the fucking and if that's what you're interested in then look no further this is short sweet why choose fucking but um i will say that i feel like having a girl who was the day before we opened seven b17 and just turn 18 ick that was not necessary <laughs> Our main character, who I'll just call the darling since that's what she gets called for the majority of this book anyway, even though I hate it, there's really no reason that she couldn't have turned 22 and not 18. Feels a little icky. So our main character, Darling, is literally talking about being in high school. We open, it's her birthday, and the the opening is her fucking the high school quarterback which by the way I don't really think that that's much of a thing in the U.S. system of high schools it's not really I don't know maybe it's a small town thing but at my high school that wasn't really a thing they like wow I get to fuck the quarterback awesome though that may be popular in like media I don't know I feel like it's giving people the wrong idea about what U.S. high schools actually look like Anywho, she says that the quarterback is terrible at sex. She says, if only I was into football and hated sex. As already, you can tell that this is quality literature. So she fakes an orgasm just to get fucking him over with and says that she gives him the porn face she knows that he likes and then says, I'm not a porn star, but I am the daughter of a prostitute and I think that's close enough. And I found this confusing because her mom was not a prostitute, which we're not gonna use the word prostitute anymore. We're gonna use sex worker. Her mom was not a sex worker as far as I could tell. Her old neighbor was who used to like take care of her when she was a little bit younger and she mentions like idolizing this neighbor and her ability to like manipulate men for money. So the neighbor felt like a prime example of hooker with a heart of gold stereotype but all right anyways they lived near that sex worker then they moved they moved houses a lot and there was actually this line in the beginning that I kind of wish that we had expanded on this theme of like what home feels like where it says when your walls blur together it's hard to feel like you're ever home. And I'm like, I think you can write. I think you can write. If you were to focus on theme, I think you could make something. You don't have to. If you just want to write, fucking go for it. But if you ever want to appeal to those of us who like theme and plot, I think you have potential. The reason her home life is so unstable is because her mother is mentally unwell after being taken by Peter Pan when she herself was 18, just like her mother and her mother, mother's mother and so on. When the darling girl, because apparently there's only ever one in each generation, much like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, whenever the darling girl turns 18, she's taken by Peter Pan to Neverland. Now, I want to say that this idea, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I feel like if you want this idea, but no magic, and it's still a Peter Pan retelling, but you want it with no magic and talking about theme, I cannot stress enough how good I thought that this book by Kay Ingram was. Like, I was really impressed by it. I didn't see a lot of the twists coming, and I think that this whole, like, generation Peter Pan thing without spoiling it was it's a thriller. Like, it was good. I liked it. I don't know why people don't. I actually asked one time, I don't understand why nobody likes this book <laughs> on Twitter. And the author ended up commenting and she was, and, and they were like, I think it's because it got mismarketed. And I was like, I think you're right. I don't know how you found this tweet, but I think you're right. I really have a lot of respect for that author, so it's fine. Kayla Ingram is good people. So anyway, moving on. If you want to read a Peter Pan-ish retelling that's plot-centric, goes into theme, and doesn't have any magic, which I know takes the literal magic out of it but if you want to read something like that I actually really recommend this for a thriller. So in this book her mom has been trying all kinds of different things like hiring different people to come to their house claiming that they can do some sort of like magic to prevent Peter Pan from taking her which there's no magic in the real world. I don't I don't, if, I don't know if they were like witches or, or what I'm not really I didn't really understand and she's like she like locks her daughter in, in a room and it's like it's all futile she's trying to keep her from Peter Pan even though she knows that she cannot keep her from Peter Pan. I think it would have been cooler, a cooler idea 
if we had had a mom who instead of doing this weird mental illness which just falls off at the end it's like non-existent at the end she's just like go ahead I'll be fine I'm fine now I, it would have been cooler if we had had a mom be like I got taken by Peter Pan when I was 18 and I came back with a lot of scars I know that he's gonna come for my daughter but I'm gonna have my daughter trained and she's gonna beat the shit out of Peter Pan and the Lost Boys and then no darling after her will ever get taken and I'm like instead we got fucking and not even good fucking but I'll talk about that later so Peter Pan arrives on her 18th birthday despite her being locked in a room with her mom Peter Pan shows up anyway smoking a cigarette by the way I just want to note again that at no point in this beginning has it been made clear how or when or where her mother is a sex worker so I don't I'm just I'm confused about that beginning part I don't think her mom works at all I'm not even sure that how they have a house plot holes on plot holes but again it's it's just it's just fucking like it's just it's just porn so Peter Pan shows up on her 18th birthday at night because he can only come out at night more on that in a second he shows up smoking a cigarette couldn't have been weed damn because I guess that's the sign the first sign that we you know get that addresses the idea that Peter Pan is a bad boy man also the audiobook narrator for this which there are three different ones two guys and a girl the one for Peter Pan sounds like a 45 year old British father who thinks he's very sexy when in fact he sounds like a 45 year old who hits on 18 year olds when he talks super gruff and British and I'm like you sound like a father she's desperate for you I remind him and disappear into the bathroom the twins were just a distraction she wants you so fuck her and keep her loyal. I don't know. It was not sexy. It was just creepy. But again, we've established that I'm very picky about audiobook narrators. Hello, it's me. I just want to tell you real quick before we get into it that I'm going to fan cast these people, except I'm going to use the fan cast for Peter Pan that all the girlies on TikTok are using, which apparently is Matt Reif, which, okay. And then I'm going to use the Sprouse brothers as the twins because why not? Um, and then for the shadow man, whose name I can't remember right now, I'm just going to use the shadow man. Okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm back to finish this review. Where were we? Peter Pan showed up, took her to Fairyland, and he says, the only rule we have is don't fuck the darlings because fucking the darlings, that's what got us into this mess. So we don't fuck the darlings. We just break them. I must break you. I don't know, man. Something tells me that they're going to fuck the darlings or the darling. They're going to, they're going to fuck the, the one darling. Also, them calling her darling and the darling got to be a bit much. I'm gonna call her the darling though, just to be annoying. She wakes up in f Neverland. <laughs> in a dilapidated room near a beach. She can hear the gulls, you know, and it would be like really relaxing if it wasn't, you know, a kidnapping. So she wakes in a dilapidated room near a beach and there's a dude staring at her and it says he has the youth of a boy, but the presence of a man. And I don't know what that means, but I'm uncomfortable either way. Something in me is telling me to call the Neverland FBI. So she's chained to a wall and she says, kinky. And I'm like, ma'am, maybe don't give your, you know, kidnappers any ideas. So there are are four main dudes in this. I forget the twins names, but there's Peter Pan, as we established, but then there's hot twins. And the only twins I could think of that people now thirst over, thanks to the beautiful disaster movie, are these guys. So we're just gonna go with these guys picture. And then there is the dark one. And yes, he literally goes by the dark one. So I feel like not only did this author lust after Peter Pan in her youth, but then she grew up and like the rest of us who lusted after Peter Pan in our youth watched once upon a time the Peter Pan storyline with the whole dark one thing and decided you know what since I'm going to write Neverland dick down I'm gonna add in the whole dark one day dark one thing and she did which you know choices were made it's fine so <laughs> This is, <laughs> this is truly a silly goofy time. So there's Peter Pan and then Vane, who is the dark one, the twins. What are their names? Ass and Bash? Kaz and, Kaz and Bass? What are their names? I don't know. I just keep saying ass and bash because I thought that that was funny, but now I regret writing that because I don't remember their actual names. Anyway, ass and bash say they're the nice ones, which begs the question, who's the mean one? The answer to that is the dark one. How is he mean? Well, he's going to spit in our mouth for one thing. Yeah, but you don't really know Vane at this point. So at this point, 
you're reading this book and you're like, all right, if Ass and Bash say they're the nice ones, then assumedly like Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen are the mean ones, right? How many fucking Lost Boys are there? One of the twins, I don't fucking remember which one, they blend together and also they have sex with her at the same time, which was creepy. They make her cloudberry pancakes because that's a thing in Neverland. How many Lost Boys are there? I don't actually know. These four, Comet, Cupid, Daughter, and Blitzen, <laughs> that's not their names, are the important ones. And by important, I mean they're the ones that are gonna fuck the darling. And they say like really weird shit, n included but not limited to, mortals decay, but Lost Boys never die. And I'm like, I thought that that was the Goonies. And they explain to her, something is wrong with the island, and that something is Peter Pan. And I'm like, mm, something's wrong with the island, but I'm thinking it's something in the water, because y'all are weird as fuck. Everything is so sexual all the time. So it's like, his size dwarfs her. We could all break her. Okay? Is she a toothpick? One of the twins is like, I don't like to watch a darling cry, but I love to watch them bleed. Well, that's a choice. I mean, blood kink is a thing, so that's fine. And they're like thinking in their inner monologue, whichever twin that we're in the POV of, it's always better if the darling doesn't know specifics. So they're like trying to keep this air of mystery. Like what the fuck is going to happen to the darling that sets her up so that she like, you know, loses her, her, um, you know, marbles the way that her mom did. Right. But they don't answer that until later. And the answer was just kind of silly. <laughs> Speaking of silly, they say things out loud for God's sake, like we're the lost boys and there's plenty of lost pussy to be found. Okay. Anyway, so she's eating cloudberry pancakes, whatever the fuck that cloudberries are. And it says that she moans eating the pancakes and one of the twins gets a fucking boner. And I'm like, damn, have y'all not had sex in a long time? But no, they're, it just said that there's plenty of lost pussy to be found. They're having sex. They're just really bricked up all the time. A woman could sneeze and these men would be like, oh my God, I'm so rigid right now. Holy shit. Holy shit, brother. I can't stand it anymore. And so she asked them like, all right, so what are you? Because you have magic. And they're like, in your world, you would have called us fairies. And I'm like, oh, so it's not just porn. It's fairy porn. Nice. And they explain that if she says the phrase, I don't believe in fairies, then a fairy dies. And I'm like, oh, the Peter Pan shit. Cool. And they're like, don't say it. If you say it, I'm dead. And I'm like, damn, there are parts of this book, like when you said that lost pussy line, that I wish she had said it. In Neverland, though, they're not called fairies. They're called fae. And the twins explain that they like lost their wings. They're supposed to have wings but they don't. They're not little though. They're big. Obviously because men in porn written like this are always enormous. They have to be so big which is a choice. Peter Pan though is not fae. He's just a huge dude. He doesn't have the biggest dick in this series though apparently. They explain that there are seven fairy courts and there's two shadows. There's always two shadows and Vane has one and Peter has one and then they talk about their sister Tilly who's the fae queen now in and they aren't allowed a fairy land anymore and they lost their wings because they killed their own father. Also, there's something called brownies, not the food kind that gives them, you know, boners when she eats them. I don't really understand what the brownies are. It just kept saying, and the brownies do this and the brownies were always there. And I'm like, what the fuck's a brownie again? Honestly, between the cloudberry pancakes and the brownies, I wasn't horny, but I was hungry. She's constantly thinking about sex, okay? Like she is just as bricked up as they are about her eating cloudberry cloudberry pancakes and she's like <laughs> damn, I'm always so horny. What's wrong with me? And that was the author being like, damn, I am writing her thinking constantly about sex. Maybe I need to address that. And instead of addressing it or just not writing it that way, she's like having the character, the captive in a different land <laughs> think, wow, yeah, I am kidnapped and constantly just thinking about sex. And I'm like, well, that's not actually you addressing it. That's just you letting us know that even the character thinks it's weird, but okay. There's this girl named Cherry who I guess if I had to guess is the sister of Captain Hook who never appears on page. It's hinted at that Cherry is fucking the dark one, Vane, and apparently he really likes it rough so she's like always coming back, beat the fuck up, and in both a sexual way and like a physical way, like a bruising and cuts and scrapes kind of way. So he's like sexual, he's the dark one, and he's also sexual in a dark way. Whoop. 
Sorry, it's my mom. Nobody tell my mom I've been reading smut. So Cherry, the girl who gets violently sexual, well, gets sexualized violently, I should say, by the dark one, invites her to a party with Ass and Bass, or whatever their names are, and the less important Lost Boys who never get names, so they're not part of, what, part of the, like, you know, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer group who is gonna fuck the darling. They're just, like, Lost Boys that are on the side that are irrelevant to the story. So she gets drunk on fairy wine, the darling, and she's sitting on some lost boy's lap. And Vane decided that he was gonna go wake up Peter Pan because the darling is sitting on some random redheaded lost boy's lap, right? But then he proceeds to ask <laughs> Peter, why do you care? And Peter's like, I don't have a good answer for that. And I'm like, if you don't care, then why did you wake up Peter Pan about this? If it doesn't matter, why did you wake up Peter Pan about this? By the way, Peter Pan sleeps in a crypt because he can't go out during the day because he doesn't have a shadow anymore. I don't know why he can't go out during the day, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna let it go because that's like the least important question of the questions that I have, honestly. <laughs> and so they leave his crypt, Vane the dark one, and Peter Pan the can't go out unless it's dark one. And Vane sings, which this is almost more cringy than the Lost Pussy line. Three, two, one, one, two, three. Better watch out. Peter Pan is going to murder thee. And I'm like, bitch, you owe me money for having to read that line. You owe me money. Not only did I read it, I heard it in my ear holes after I had to hear the Lost Pussy line. And you know what? Strike one, shame on me. Strike two, you owe me money. This is ridiculous. Anyway, um, despite not having an answer as to why he cares, Peter Pan makes the very rational choice okay to rip out the unnamed lost boy's heart that the darling was sitting on the lap of <laughs> So yeah, Peter Pan sure did murder thee. Apparently he gets so mad that he was watching her sitting on the lap of a random ass lost boy, which I thought the rule was they don't fuck the darling, right? I thought that that was the rule. I thought that they don't fuck the darling. So like, who cares? Has her on his lap. Like y you should not be paying attention because you're supposed to be staying away from the even very idea of fucking the darling. But again, something tells me they're gonna fuck the darling. And he's like, <clears throat> if you wanna fuck the lost boy, boys why not start at the top and see her idea was I'm going to fuck these guys get them to care about me so that I can figure out what's going on here and use that as a way to get home the problem is that maybe she could have been good at scheming if she wasn't so goddamn horny <laughs> because she's like I need to make a plan I want to fuck maybe I should make my plan fucking because I really want to fuck and I'm like ma'am Please, <laughs> just use a little bit of goddamn sense. <laughs> No brain cells here, no brain cells. The thing that's really lost is not the pussy, it's the brain cells. She gets fucked by Peter Pan, but this is why choose, right? So why choose? So one of the twins is like, may I cut in with my dick and does, but then invites his own brother to join in. So then one of them is getting a blowjob from her while the other is fucking her. And I'm just kind of creeped out at the idea of brothers. It's not technically in it just feels weird like I would not want my sister to see me naked so <laughs> anyway so horrifyingly while they are fucking this darling um, even though the rule was they don't they did uh, one brother says to the other ready to fill her up brother Nikki I can't stand you <laughs> I wanna die. Then they orgasm at the same time, which was both objectively hilarious and horrifying all at once. But there's four of them, right? So where is the mean one? Can't forget about Dancer. Don't worry, he didn't forget about her. He walks up and spits in her mouth. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. And he says, that's all you'll get from me. Something tells me eventually you're gonna fuck the darling too. So Cass then is teaching her to butcher a fish. And again, I don't know why everything is so fucking sexual. And he's like, run the knife from the mouth to the anal fin. And she's like, oh my God, he said anal. And I'm like, bitch, you are butchering a fucking fish. She's like, why is everything he says so sexual? It's not. It's literally just culinary shit. Next, he's gonna be frying up eggs and you're gonna be like, oh my god, my eggs, like stop, stop it. Eventually she does 
try to get Vane to fuck her and he's like she's like sitting on his lap and grinding on him and he sort of like teases her and then <laughs> it says he slaps her tit I shit you not <laughs> and says I won't fuck you and I'm like you know personally if a dude slapped me in my tit I would just laugh like I can't take you seriously it's not even demeaning it's just weird <laughs> it's just a weird thing to do I, I mean like the spitting in her mouth I get that is both like demeaning in like a sexual way but the slapping of the titty like titties are just very bouncy like it's not gonna do very much anyway okay so he slaps her in the tit and says I'm not gonna fuck you so he's playing hard to get <sighs> dark ones they're always so hard to get I, I guess I don't know and he's like I'm not gonna make you into my pretty little broken fuck doll and I'm like okay thank you for that you did slap her titty though <laughs> But the, the twins are super nice to her. They like, you know, show her their magic, which they can like make, I don't know, scenes where it looks like stars and forests and stuff. And they give her a bracelet with a kiss on it, which is a little acorn, you know, Peter Pan. And it's imbued with magic. It's cute, you know, except them being brothers is still kind of weird that they do sexual stuff with her. They're into rope play, by the way. And like, it's fine to be into rope play. It's just, again, I would not be doing rope play with my sister present, so. Mm -hmm. We get POV from Tilly, which is the fairy queen princess, the ass and bass, their sister. It, it lets us know immediately that she's like kind of bad. She's kind of a bad guy. So the point of this is they need Wendy. What? They need... <laughs> They need Wendy Darling's descendant to help them find Peter Pan's shadow because Peter Pan is dying. I don't think it ever actually calls him the Never King in this book, but he is the Never King. He's the king of the island, but the island is dying because Peter Pan is dying because he hasn't had a shadow in a long ass time because he originally fucked a darling, Wendy, assumedly, which is like our main character's great grandmother or some shit. She hid away Peter Pan's shadow and he needs to know where it is in order to get it back and be fixed. And Tilly, Ass and Bass's sister, is supposed to show up and when the darling is 18, the darling is supposed to come to Neverland so that Tilly the fairy queen can root around in her head and find the memories in her blood of the darling, Wendy darling, find the memories of her ancestor who hid Pan's shadow. But for some reason, this causes their minds to sort of like self-destruct. Except, turns out that Tilly is actually fucking up the darlings on purpose because she she's evil for some reason. I don't even remember why. It's not really plot relevant. The point of this is that it's smut, right? Which for a plot girly is kind of annoying, <laughs> but whatever. Vane, of all fucking people, the dark one, steps in while Tilly is rooting around through the darling's head to find the memories so that they can find Peter Pan's shadow. And Vane is like, stop, no more. Even though uh, I spit in her mouth and I slapped her titty and I called her a whore. I can't take this. This is too far for me. <laughs> they stop it from happening. Well, it turns out you finally get the backstory towards the end, which it's not, it, it doesn't feel that cool of a reveal because you didn't really know any of these characters. Again, the point is it's smut, right? It could have been better written so that I would have actually liked this, but it's just smut. <laughs> That's actually typically the problem I have with Why Choose books. I have nothing against like the dynamic of Why Choose. It's just that I have found that every single time I read a Why Choose book, it's really just like the plot is maybe there and it's not well constructed because the point is not the plot. The point is like the plot is sort of like <laughs> <laughs> like sprinkled in there just to just to have there but the point is the fucking of multiple people which like get the dick like I'm happy for you get multiple dicks it's just when I'm reading a book I really want the plot you want the dick I want the plot we can't both be happy here right so it's really hard for me to find why I choose books that I actually like which is why I typically stay away from them but this could have been good it's just it wasn't <laughs> so the the thing that happened was that Tinkerbell, who is dead, we've been told she's dead, we finally get told after we do all this fucking slapping titties, gutting fish in a sexual way, and almost ruining the darling's memories, ripping out the heart of a random lost boy, hearing that there's lots of lost pussy to be found. After all of this, we finally hear Tinkerbell masterminded stealing the shadow with someone named Toodles because Peter Pan was in love with the original darling. Well then, 
then magically our main character the darling has a dream where she sees her ancestor and she's like I know where the shadow is it is in my great grandmother Wendy's trunk it turns out Peter Pan actually killed Tinkerbell because he said I don't believe in fairies to her which <laughs> oh no <laughs> I bet just for good measure, he slapped her titty first. So they go to Darling's house. They go to her great grandmother, Wendy's trunk. They find the secret compartment. They open it and there's two shadows in it, I think. I don't really remember. Again, the plot is not the point. The fucking is the point. And to be honest, the fucking is not great. Like if you're gonna write smut, I was kind of hoping that it would be good. Did nothing for me. Like, and it's really hard to like find a sex scene that I even get a little bit hot under the collar. This, nothing. <laughs> I don't, I'm completely unaffected by this shit. Everybody's gonna be so different. It's just like, even if you're just reading this for the smut, I don't think that you're, you're getting, like there's better smut out there. I haven't ever read smut that I would give five stars, but I know that it can be better than this book. So they're at her mother's house, which I don't understand how her mother has a house. I don't understand who's been taking care of her mom this whole time she's been gone. And suddenly that whole idea of her mom being like mentally not all there because of, you know, Tilly rooting around at Queen Tilly, the fairy queen lady fucking around with her brain. All of that just sort of drops and she's like, mom, I want to go back to fairyland. And her mom's like, okay, I'm not going to go with you though. Because why would her mom be there? She's going to fuck a bunch of dudes. <laughs> Apparently fucking while well, a family member is in the same room is only okay if it's your hot twin brother. I don't know. Really weird. I'm just really creeped out by the twin thing. And so she tells Peter Pan, I want to go back to Neverland. And he's like, okay. And then the worst line, worse than the lost pussy line, the worst line in this book happens. He says, you can come back with me, but don't get cocky. And she said, I won't. I'll just get cock. Mm -hmm that's enough and she's like I'm so glad that mom's feeling settled now and I'm like yeah how did that happen again this is just sort of like nothing's written very well the point was not to write well-rounded characters or well-rounded character arcs or anything that like makes sense the point was to fuck Peter Pan and the Lost Boys and she did and then they go back to Neverland and then there's oh and then the two shadows pop up I think and then you're like oh no what's gonna happen but anything that's gonna happen like I can't imagine being well written plot because this book was so short and stupid and had so many bad lines. I'll just get caught? Why, why did you write that? Why did I have to read those words? Why would you do this to me? That felt like a personal attack. I don't even know what the fuck to rate this. I, I guess like one and a half. It could have been so much worse. I mean, I had a huge crush on Jeremy Sumter too when I was 13 or whatever age I was when I watched that movie. So in a way I get growing up and like writing, you know, things that were like foundational to like learning who you were when you were a teenager and those hormones were just kicking in. Um, but at the same time, couldn't we have done this well? <laughs> I'm not not interested in vain though. I mean, that sounds interesting, I guess. I like the idea of a dark one, but again, I watched Once Upon a Time too, so. Anyway, well, that was, um, <laughs> that was The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. I hope you enjoyed. I did not. I guess I should go. I have lots of things to do. There's lots of lost pussy to be found apparently, so maybe I should get on that. <laughs> um, if you want me to read the next of this, the rest of the series, you're gonna have to fucking pay me. There's no way, uh, in hell. <laughs> because it's so stupid. <laughs> If you pay me, then yes. Uh, otherwise, no way. I read this willingly without being commissioned and I have deep regrets. Deep titty slapping regrets. <laughs> Not the worst thing I've ever read though. Like at least it was, at least I laughed at it a few times. It could have been so much worse. But if you like Peter Pan and are horny and don't want plot, maybe this will be for you, which like no shade. I'm just glad you read. Okay. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to. Uh, try not to slap any titties and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello. No. <laughs> this is Trash Can Rachel. That was Carlos and I have to say thank you for being a friend to my Therapy Bills patrons and those are Alexander, Allie, <laughs> Maggie, Bubble Tea, Cammy, Chris, Claire, Des Roberts, DJ Rocktopus, Emperor's New Blues, Aaron, Eric, Farrer, Harley, Jack and Jill, John E, Casey McKenzie, Kate W, Kelly No K, Caitlin M, Quinn, Lady Kitty Bug, Lex, Alice, Peggy Lou, Rain, Reese, Samar, Scarlet, Shiny, and SMK. Thank you all so much.
for being a friend. And before I go, I have to say thank you for being a friend to my potato search Marxist patrons, and those are AM Angel. Actually, before I do this, if you can hear my kids yelling about Minecraft in the background, no, you can't. Okay, sorry. AM Angel, Alicia, Amanda, Andy, Angelica, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ashley H, Ava, BB, Beck, Blythe, Bookish Brain Rot, Bree, Brian, Caitlin, Carlin, Cassandra, Catherine, Kathy, Chris, CJ, Cole, Colleen, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deborah, Diet Goth, Dorian, Dorotea, Ebby, Ember, Emily A, Emily L, Emma, Aaron, Ezra, Hannah C, Hannah T, Harpy Kuro, Haley, Hello There Darling, Ilyanaka, India Inks, JM Tennant, Jay is on Olympus, JT, Jen H, Jen Michelle, Jenny G, Jillian, Jess Pugsley, Kaylee, Kat, Katie, Katya, Kayala, Kendra, Kylie, Laughing Cat Dog, Laura, Library of Scars, Lisa, LP, Lou Siri, Luna Moth, Lustful Octopus, Martin, Marcella, Marquita, Maz, Malara, MK Books, Molly, James, Nat, Natalie, Never, Nicole G, Nicole R, Nyan Binary, Paige P, Penny Chilling, Fox Club, Pixel Stars, Pyrethion, Rachel B, Rat Sarah, Reba, Rebecca, Ren, Robin, Rosie, Rowan, Other Rowan, Sicoria, Sadie, Samantha, Sarah C, Sarah H, Sarah the Bear, Shamed, Shanae, Shannon, Shana, Shana K, Sean, Sophie, Stephanie, Talia, Three Old Dogs, Tina, Toast, Trash Can Teddy, Sev, Valentine, and Writer A. Thank you all so much for being a friend. Thank you.